All right, Ted here. I, I've uh, had my shop smith since 1985, and I've heard some people say, well, you know, they're, they don't like them. They're, uh, they're, you got to have all these setups. And uh, the thing is, if you're in a small area, I've got 400 square feet in my shop right here, and you, know, you can't tell me you can't get seven pounds on a five pound bag because I've done it. But I, I just don't move around, I get around, but I do like the versatility. I had all the other things, the big joiner and the big table saw, but uh, as you know, time went on, and I had this in time to redo a 1947 Chris Craft Express Cruiser, my red and white, which is on my channel if you'd like to take a look at it. And what I didn't do is I didn't show you ripping 14-foot mahogany boards for the gunnels or resawing the, you know, half-inch mahogany plywood for the ceilings uh, but anyway or even tongue and grooving and then uh, working on everything like I did so but it's 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 versatile as can be but the thing that kind of bothers me is that they basically publicize this thing it's, it's a lathe it's basically a lathe but there's so little that shopsmith or even uh, these people that have been promoting it and showing their videos uh, that I like I learned a lot from them but they really don't talk much about it being used as a lathe. Now it only weighs, uh, when it's down in the uh, lathe position, it only weighs about 340, 360 pounds. Uh, so I leave the joiner on, which is another 50 pounds, which gets it close to 400, but the, the lathe I watch, these uh, Lagunas and these other big lathes that you can see uh, on all these videos that I love to watch because I learn from them, they weigh around 700 pounds, 800, 900 pounds, and they still walk around every once in a while. But I mean, that's still like almost double what this thing weighs. But what that means is you basically want to go slow until you get your, whatever you're turning balanced out, just like on the big lathe. But again, uh, it's two horsepower. But what the other thing that bothers me is that they don't show this thing, and then they have this thing called a universal tool rest, which basically gives you the same function as one of these big lathes. And I'll put that on a little bit. But I thought at first I would show you the, it's not what came with it initially on the Mark V, it's the upgrade tool rest for the 510, 520. And it's on the uh, Mark VII, Mark IV. Uh, it's okay, it's a little bit more stable. But I think you're gonna see when you put the universal tool rest on, it makes a difference. So let's take a look at it. Okay, as you can see, this is the, the upgrade. The bed of this thing can move back and forth. So you get all the, uh, you can go full range with it. Uh, it's got what came with it, this tool rest, which is, it's, it's okay. But you lock this down, it stays in place. There's still just a little bit of monkey motion. You really have to lock down all the accessories. This is the height, this gives it turning, this lets it stabilize. I've got it set up already for uh, turning. This is a Craftsman uh, tool and it's basically carbide on the end. But this, this is some hard crap. So I'm just gonna hit this on for a minute because I'm not gonna do a lot because I've already have. Right now it's set at 500 RPM. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna reset it now by going back to menu and I'm gonna take it up to the lathe, confirm it, that's about two inches in diameter, confirm it's a hardwood, confirm, now it's going to go at 950 RPM, all you got to do is hit the on. So anyway, that's kind of where I am right now with this thing. And what I'll do is um, I can't 
put the steady rest on because I'm a, I'm a disabled vet. I got only 25% nerve function waist down, so I don't want to take a chance of falling down. So uh, probably tomorrow I'll get my son in law to come over and we'll I'll video the installation of the Universal Tool Rest. And you can kind of see the difference in how it looks between this and that system. It's, it's uh, a little pricey, but if you're going to do wood turning, I think, uh, on a shop smith, I think it's a thing to get. So, one last chance to look at this. This system, the way it's set up. And then tomorrow we'll change it out. Okay, so we're going to install the Universal Tool Rest uh, 555811. I've gone through the instructions. They're pretty, pretty simple, pretty clear. <clears throat> These are all the pieces that go to it. Now, if you have a table assist, obviously you have to remove the coupler pin that goes to it. Try and ensure that you put it someplace where you can find it later with the screws and washers which I will do. So now I'll just put it on the bandsaw. Now, I just knocked off one of my washers, which I'm going to have to find, obviously, which I will. I didn't remember there was one underneath them too. So anyway, I have put Gorilla Tape on top of my travel bed. Now this thing basically tells you to put this on this before you put it here. And I don't see, especially for me, being careful how much I lift and weight, that I want to do it that way. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to get these pieces off of here for the moment because I don't need them yet. Put them aside. And maybe I'll find out why they told me to do it that way, but I really think I'm okay doing it the way I want to do it. We shall see. Obviously, this lag bolt has to go in. And the good news about it is, it fits in there like so, and it ain't going nowhere because it's going to bottom out. Now, I'm going to center this as best I can on this just by eyeballing it, using the corners as a reference and turn it where it runs perpendicular to the tubes. I don't know really how important that is, but this thing really looks like it isn't perpendicular anyway. It's kind of a weird hole pattern, but it didn't say anything about being specific with the hole pattern. And again, now this can come up like so. So this can go on after I do the attachment underneath this thing. Now they only gave me one bar that's threaded. So the question is which it has to go in these holes here. So that explains the whole pattern I guess. Drop down in and they go underneath this. And thread in. Make sure you don't cross thread them if you can help it. I'm 
see if it's the standard or if no, it's going to be larger in it. Of course it is. So let me dig out my Allen wrenches and we'll get back to this after I tighten those up. Okay, now what I did here was I, I lifted the bar underneath here until it was touching the base of this. And then I just tightened these down until I could feel them they were snug. And once I got them snug, then I made sure I did equal pressure on both sides. That way I'm not... It's really important you do that to make sure that you're not over... You don't want to over torque it, obviously, but it's not going to go anywhere. And that, puts, that means the bar is flat, it's perfectly aligned. So this can come up now. And I think I'm going to be successful in doing what I wanted to do with it. So, let's find out. We'll put this on here for the moment. Okay, and it is set. It can't go anywhere. washer and then you've got to get this started now if necessary and it may be you can run a screwdriver or something underneath there to hold that up while you're doing it. So I'm going to try that, then we'll get back. Okay, that worked really well. You can loosen it. You can get the handle out of the way if you need to. It's just like the rest of them. And you have all this monkey motion you can play with here with this thing. Now, this can go on. You know it is a different size. So I'm going to install this on here and install one here, obviously. Or you can install it over here if you want. So I don't know why you have two of them, but you do. Now I gotta find an Allen wrench to install this one. We'll get back to it. Okay, so what I did was I removed this piece here. Now you gotta be careful because what it has here, this has to fit in like so, and it comes all the way in, but it's got two springs in there, so you gotta be careful that you don't lose those springs while you're doing this. Get these back in. And this is your lock mechanism. Current. I don't know what they call it, but I call it a turret. Once you get those back in, make sure they're nice and tight. Everything has to be nice and tight. These lathes vibrate.
So now you can tighten this down where it takes that plate up against until it totally tightens this thing down where it doesn't move. Okay. Now I can put this rascal back in. Either the side or the front. I'll just put it back in the side for now. Okay. So we're set up. That's basically it. Now it comes with three, count them, everything's down locked tight, it's not going to go anywhere. It comes with three tools. Let's back this off again. Actually, I think I had to buy these as an option. So it has this guy here. Clever. A short standard wrist. Nice and smooth. And the S rest that you can use, obviously, to get inside of a bowl. This guy right here. So it's done. Now it's just a matter of getting everything set up again and let's see if this isn't more sturdy than what comes with the Mark 7, Mark 4 and came with the 520. We'll be back. Okay, let's give it a try. Face shield on. And this is my uh, new leather apron. First time I've ever had it on. Okay, just so you know, it's not the uh, not the lathe that's stopping. This thing just can't get a grip. This wood is so hard. And of course, one of the things I've done is I had the lock on, so it only let me put it so tight. So let's see if this helps a little bit. And if you're trying to learn how to Use the lathe, don't do what I'm doing.
tell you right away, this came out smooth when I started, sh you know, scraping it. Anyway, this is a lot. There's no movement here at all. This thing is really solid. I really like it. Uh, if I were going to be a wood turner, I'm going to do a lot of turning. I've got a lot of uh, oak and ash and, and some, some walnut things. I need to make a handle for one of the uh, lathe tools I'll show later. Uh, I watched the Arkansas Wood Whirler. It used to be called the Whirler. He's an old guy in Arkansas. I say old, he's younger than I am, I'm sure, but uh, he started out a few years ago and he's really gotten good. A lot of really nice ideas and processes and practices. He likes the epoxy. I'm not into that yet. But anyway, this is it. I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, if you're thinking about getting one, uh, if you're not going to do a lot of wood turning, I don't see the, the profit in it. But if you're going to do a lot of wood turning on your chop smith, this is absolutely the way to go. I really like this. This has turned out, uh, there's no chatter. It, it's just hands over better than the standard process, the standard tooling they give you for the shop smith. Whether, uh, it's the upgraded, like I say, but it's just not as good. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe. Leave some comments. Again, I'm not trying to teach anybody how to use a lathe because that's not what I do. It's, I'm not that good at it yet. I'm working on it. Haven't done it for a long time, so i got to get back into it. Can't even keep my suspenders up. So anyway, again, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Okay, I just had to try it. Same day. This is a piece of walnut. This is a square piece. I've got it down to about, oh, inch and a quarter, inch and a half. It's just perfect for my grip. And it's for what is known as, from the wood whirler, the little beaver. As you can see, it has a carbide bit in it. It's got a flat on it, so when you install it, there's a half inch hole in the end of this thing. And I've put a collet, a brass collet on it, and the epoxy's drying. I'll let that set. Then I'll come back and round this off a little bit. I'll finish this probably. I'm thinking with shellac. A little bit more durable. Uh, after I get around this, I'll round the end off a little bit on the end here. I'm going to leave the indication in it, the center. I'll never use it, obviously. But anyway, I'm quite pleased with it. <laughs> Trying to get me in here. So anyway, again, thanks for watching. And good turning.